Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so proud to be here talking to such beautiful people and such an exciting audience. The sessions today have been so engaging. Um, I'm happy somebody took some shots at us this morning. Um, Todd, we need to speak later. Um, amazing that Amazon is going to become a casino or could become a casino, but you know, there's no talk of Microsoft becoming a casino. So you know, get a few little disclaimers out of the way and uh, introduce myself. Um, I've worked for Microsoft for 10 years. Um, I love speaking at events. I love working with customers and partners. And what I want to do today is talk to you a little bit about some of my experience about how we disrupt industries. Um, my titles have ranged in numerous ways, technical evangelist, cloud solution architect, senior engineering manager. Um, but at the heart of it, it was always about two things. There was technical intensity, something which Satya has talked about a lot. It's about infusing technology into our services, our customers, our clients, our businesses. And it's also about being customer-centric, obsessing over the customer. This is two things which Microsoft always keep at the heart of any engagement that we work with. We talk about digital transformation, um, and a lot of industries go through that. I don't think the iGaming industry is going to go through digital transformation. You've already done that. When you moved from land-based casinos into iGaming, that was your digital transformation. You are now looking at more. I see the thirst for you to want to work you know, closer to your customers, who are, you know, at the end of the day, your players. Getting to know them, engaging them in different ways is going to be something that's key. And we saw that in the previous presentation with um, bots coming to life. So let's talk a little bit about what I want to talk to you today. I want to talk about how it's easier for some of the startups to make moves and shifts in these industries, but it's always slightly more difficult for the larger industries because you are actually keeping the lights on. You actually have to keep a business running. But this model is very fragile. It's very fragile because people can come in and disrupt, and you have to be ready. Microsoft typically deals with startups as well as large industry players. And I've talked to a lot of different industries. I've worked in banking and fintech, in Forex, for example. How can they actually make better use of their data to get the right product in front of the right person at the right time? I've worked with telcos, where we've had to work with you know, hundreds of thousands, if not billions of transactions per day in terms of authentications. So we know scale. That's something that we, you know, we actually love and work, work with on a daily basis. But an industry closer to your heart, rather than just banking and industries like telcos, is the esports and the gaming industry. Microsoft has played in this space for at least the last seven years. If anybody remembers the London Olympics, we streamed those Olympics to 30 million viewers over the internet. Later on, we came with Sochi, and we engaged from the track or from the ski slopes, gathering that telemetry, building up that over-the-top experience to go along with streaming those games. So we know this industry. We've worked in this industry um, for a long time. We've done things with Formula One. We've taken telemetry of cars, streamed petabytes of data in a match from a single car up into the cloud, analyzed it, and got that insight back to the driver in real time. This is what we do. Okay, this is what we do in industries to disrupt those industries. I want to talk about disruptive innovation today because I think that's something that this industry that you know, we're looking at today could do with. We could do with some disruption, and we want it to come from, you know, from within the industry with the help of partners like Microsoft. I want Microsoft to be that partner that you turn to where you say, I can trust Microsoft because they've got the expertise. They're not just a tech company, they've got the expertise to boot as well. One of the favorite topics of mine is fan engagement. Okay, if you take Real Madrid, half a billion fans, we helped Real Madrid engage those fans to create a new revenue stream and a new market opportunity. We created a digital experience which tracks the fan making their purchases from the shop, watching videos online, going to the matches and buying tickets, all over different devices. We stitch all of that together, and we created a new stream to get the right product in front of the right fan at the right time. That is custom obsession. That is technical intensity, because we could put the fan right at the center of the story. 
We take sports so seriously, we actually have a global center for sports. Okay, this innovation center in Spain deals with building up our Microsoft Sports development platform. It is a platform which is up and running and being used by La Liga. It's being used by other football clubs other than Real Madrid. And we also put people on the ground. So we have people on the ground in Spain. We have people on the ground in Malta. Microsoft Malta actually has iGaming experts ready to talk to you about your business and to start understanding how we can actually help you. And we also notice that a lot of innovation spills across industries. So what starts off as something cool in one industry might actually be even cooler in your industry. So I feel there is a huge opportunity for us to work together. And the good thing is we are not going to be your competitor, right? We are never going to be Microsoft Casino, okay? Um, I love the way you put up Amazon Casino, and I don't think there will be a Microsoft Casino. If you look at how we've transformed, we had to do a major transformation. I think it's fair to say we became cool again, right? Our stock price certainly shows it, right? I'm not driving a Ferrari yet, but my stock prices have gone up quite a bit, um, and I'm quite happy with what Satya is doing. But what did Satya actually do? He turned us from a 20 billion industry to a 74 billion industry, and he didn't do it overnight, but he did it very carefully and strategically. What he realized is that we had to change the way we see our competition. We embraced the competition. We took Kubernetes, we took Hadoop, we took open source, and we actually made them products that we could actually deliver as a managed service. We actually make it easier for you to consume these services so that you as operators, gaming operators, you don't have to actually focus on the tech, you can focus on the business. Now I understand tech is your bread and butter. You grew up knowing tech, and you still have that control, but only if you want it. So what we also do is we became the biggest OSS contributor. We actually pour more lines of code back into OSS than any other provider. Can you imagine that? Ten years ago, Microsoft being the largest OSS provider of source code. We make it a first-class citizen. No longer is it the Microsoft that you have to come and learn Microsoft tools. You don't have to use Internet Explorer. You can use Chrome on top of your Android phone to access your Office 365 mail if you want. It's a different world. We've embraced the competition, and we're hopefully leveraging that as much as we can. So yes, let's talk a little bit about this industry that we're in and the changes that we're seeing. Every industry goes through a strategic inflection point. Andy Grove coined this term you know, right back in the 90s when he was at Intel. Your industry has gone through one inflection point, moving to iGaming, but the new inflection point is a do or die. You either keep on that curve, which goes down, or you jump onto a new wave of innovation and you make it work for you, because you are going to bring a 10x disruption factor to your industry by what you are doing. You do need to change. In the beginning, people will tell you, hey, that's just hype. You know, that new thing you're messing around with, that AR, that new bot, it's just hype, it's immature, it's not ready but you need to instill a culture in your company that allows for that experimentation. And this is what Microsoft allows you to do. It fosters that innovation, that experimental way of working. Um, it's amazing what you, know, you can do with very little time and how quickly you can actually make things work. But you have to remember, cloud as an innovation factor, as something that's going to drive your business, has been around for a while. It's now like electricity. OK, it's, it's commonplace. And if you just use the cloud to move your virtual machines, to move some of your workloads, I call it the babysitting service, what have you gained on your competitors? You haven't encapsulated any IP into that solution. You haven't made anything new. You've just moved one problem from one place to another and saved 20% or saved 50%. And then after the next year, what do you do? You need to do something more. So I want you to look at a cloud leader here, not in terms of market share, but in terms of vision. Microsoft started off with a platform as a service vision, which was way ahead of its time, but nobody was ready for it. Face it, yes, Amazon is in front of us in terms of market share, but look at our vision. Look at what we are trying to do across the breadth of this space. What's good is the cloud is ready for prime time. It is something which you, know, you can leverage 54 data centers across the globe, and you can be in any country with much lower latency, 
operating in that country through some of our data centers, of course, with the necessary agreements. I'm not a lawyer, okay? Um, I was fascinated by the lawyer session in the beginning. I tried really hard to concentrate and understand everything they were saying. Um, but at some point, I said, no, okay? I'm technical and business, but I, I don't want to be a lawyer. Um, no offense. So let's talk about hybrid. Hybrid allows you to move gracefully. Nobody likes abrupt disruption. You'd like to disrupt your competitors, but you don't want to disrupt your business. Like I said, you've got to keep the lights on. And what better place to do that than in a hybrid manner? Microsoft has partners in Malta, uh, BMIT, will actually allow you to host on an Azure on-premises solution in a hybrid manner. So that when you come to move that to the cloud, there's very little upskilling that needs to happen. It's the same Azure on-premises as it is the same Azure in the cloud. Azure is our cloud product. So much so, it was called Windows Azure. Now we call it Microsoft Azure, because we took the Windows out of it, because we don't host only Windows virtual machines. We host over 50% Linux virtual machines on our cloud platform. That's how much we're embracing the competition. So I hope you will agree we are a different Microsoft than when you walked into the room. I hope some of you take away and say, wow, I didn't realize Microsoft has changed that much. We also have to look at agility. Getting your products to market is something I've seen in every industry. Whether you're a telco trying to release a new service, whether you're a bank or a forex trying to do trading online, you want to get those services out to market quicker. And the cloud is all about agility. Whether it's cutting your code and checking it in in an you know, automated manner, or whether it's about getting servers stood up in a you know, fraction of the time that you did before, it's all about automation. It's all about trying to get that agility. And of course, with that will come disruption. So let's talk a little bit about customer experiences. I like to think that the data is the new fuel of your business. We all agree we're collecting vast amounts of data, but are we doing anything with it? How are we getting insight out of that data? Well, look at these different areas, and you'll notice that not one of them is focused on the technology. The technology is the enabler. The technology can help drive your business, but it is not your business. It's all about the people. It's all about the customers. It's all about you know, empowering your users, not your end users, but your people inside the company, giving them the tools that they need in order to make decisions, democratizing IT, we call it, making it accessible and available. It's also about making experiments cheap to run. In other words, you want to do something, but you don't want to spend a lot of time analyzing it. I love Todd's presentation where he talked about, you know, just get down and do it and brainstorm. The cloud allows you to do that. The cloud allows you to fail fast and fail cheap. It doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of time upfront thinking about the whys. It also allows you to do something different, for example. Can you build a different UX? Can you do something better? So can you have more accuracy in your fraud detection or your analytics or your player's lifetime value? So you know, with the cloud, think of doing more or doing something different or doing something better because that's what it's there to enable you. Don't limit yourself. What I like to um, do with a lot of my customers is say, listen, whiteboard, white, blue sky thinking. Just don't limit yourself. Think of the art of the possible. And then let's give you the tools to actually go and do that. But let's also give you the, the consultancy. Let's pull in the partners. We have a lot of partners who have built fantastic machine learning models. They've operationalized them and put them on the cloud already. They're there for you to tweak. They have APIs. Sometimes there's this risk of, oh, it's strategic. I must build it myself. And this is what's going to cause a lot of arguments with me later on, I'm sure. So if anything you don't agree with, please come and talk to me. If there's anything I've said that resonates with you, please come and talk to me. I'm hoping to have a lot of people talk to me after this session. But like I said, if it's strategic and you have the resources, then yes, you can build it yourself. But if it's strategic and you don't have the resources, look at partners. Partners can help you. So let's analyze each of these pillars in concrete fashion now. Concrete examples which apply to the iGaming industry, which could be run on a Microsoft platform. I want to be concrete, because 
you know, very often everything works in PowerPoint. I don't want to be that guy who says, you know, this is just PowerPoint. So one of your chief concerns, and I'm sure everybody's concern, is responsible gambling. Imagine an AI which could sit with your player and actually help that player make a responsible judgment. Actually be sitting there and say, you know, maybe you should self-exclude and give that message at the right time in the right way because that AI has been trained on thousands and thousands of other users. Imagine AI helping you predict the player's lifetime value. Three days on your site, you're looking at the transactions. You're not looking at the player's demographics. You're looking at the way the player is playing, telemetry. You need to gather telemetry. And telemetry can be expensive when you gather a lot of data over a long period of time. But imagine gathering that data in the cloud, storing it in a data lake, and then being able to analyze or reason over it and come up with a player's predicted lifetime value after three days. Should I invest in this campaign? Should I market that particular product to them? All of that is possible and is very, very much doable. Connected to player lifetime value, of course, is also more accurate um, cost per acquisition. This is a real difficult game, right? Because you are actually playing this game with a fear of missing out. Like, you know, if I exclude that particular affiliate, then maybe I'm missing out on good players. But with proper AI, with proper machine learning and um, deep learning algorithms, you can actually gather telemetry and look at that player and see, are they really worth the CPA today versus the CPA that they're worth tomorrow based on how much their player lifetime value is changing over time. So AI just allows you to do what humans can do much, much faster. Unfortunately, AI hasn't reached general artificial intelligence yet. What we see is narrow artificial intelligence. We see it given a particular task. It looks for you know, particular patterns on trained data, and you know, it works within that scope. Microsoft is investing a billion dollars in a company called OpenAI to actually help foster AI without bias. Super important. There's nothing worse than AI with bias, especially if the machines take over. I'd hate to be the one that they bias against. And also to have general AI capabilities. In other words, near human capability of artificial intelligence. Of course, fraud detection, bonus manipulation, again, you name it, the number of possibilities where you can capture information and analyze that. And you can do it in a hybrid manner. The great thing is you can actually say, well, I want to do it on premises because my data cannot leave the country. I can create my machine learning model, and then I can export it into the cloud and actually run that in the cloud. Because you can move those workloads without having to retrain your people. A lot of the stuff you've already trained them in will still carry on working. There's the rise of bots. We saw a bot just a minute ago, not as fancy as the, the bot we built. Um, OK, this only took a weekend. It's a travel airline solution. Um, but literally, a weekend to build a bot which incorporates sentiment analysis. So we have cognitive services, ready-made services where you send a picture, and they'll tell you, happy, sad. You send it some text, and it says, oh, this sentiment sounds like this user's pissed off. All of those are ready-made. Speech recognition, for example, it's on human parity level. We are leading in the cognitive services area, and we're making bots incredibly more powerful. There's different generations of bots, OK? There are bots which can um, ask you Q&A. You see a lot of these bots nowadays. You go to any website, and it's basically like reading the frequently asked questions to you. And you, you know, you're asking questions, and it's looking up Q&A. In fact, they're driven by static pages very often. But look at the newer bots which are out there. We have Cortana, which is allow, you know, allowing you to schedule meetings. And it, you know, it acts like a proper digital assistant. Imagine when we infuse AI into these bots, what the result is going to be. It's going to be an amazing experience for your, your players. Imagine them being able to have an AI sit by side, by, side by side with them to pull those stats, to help them be responsible gamblers, to help them actually um, make the right choices. So engaging customers, engaging fans, that is Microsoft's bread and butter. We love to engage our customers. If you look on the back side of things, or the back office side of things, look at how you, employ, how you empower your employees. 
We've worked with one of the leading game providers in Europe in the gaming industry to help create a better DevOps cycle. I know it sounds techy, it sounds boring, but what's the essence of this company's um, ethos? They wanted to be able to release their products in a more timely fashion because, like Fortnite, everybody's waiting for the next update. You don't get the update out, you lose market attention very quickly. So they wanted to get their products out very, very quickly in a tried and tested environment, in an automated fashion, and they've got to move 150 products out into the cloud on time, in a regular manner, following regulations, etc., etc., etc. So they turned to us to help them. We actually helped them as part of my uh, senior um, engineering manager role. We took them on board and we onboarded them to Azure in a couple of weeks. That's how little time it actually took them. And we didn't tell them to change their code. We just said, listen, we can help you with this. We'll build the pipelines. We'll actually move your stuff, and we'll put proper DevOps in place. Of course, there's democratization of IT. Things like the Power Platform. Imagine giving your accountants, your, um, anybody in the company, the ability to write programs, to be able to take data, which is stored, and interpret it. They could use Power BI, but it's much cooler if they can actually build a little app. We have a Power Platform which allows you to do that, democratizing IT, as I said before. And lastly, let's have a look at transforming your product. Todd did mention AI, augmented reality. We've done some great things with augmented reality. I think augmented reality is the way forward. Um, HoloLens is a great product, which is just getting better and better, and it will get cheaper, and it will get more, you know, more uh, mainstream as we go forwards. But imagine taking your clients to a virtual world where they feel they're in Vegas where they feel the roulette wheel is actually spinning on their coffee table. Creating AR experiences will engage your customer in a new way. Creating new customer experiences where, through AI, you are offering them the right game at the right time in the right place. Statistics show that the top game in the list of top played games is typically not the game they play the most, because you need to understand your customer. You need to engage them differently. You need to make those UIs super intuitive to understand what it is that the customer wants. Just because there's a golfing tournament on doesn't mean I put a golfing click link so that they can actually go and you know, do some, some gambling on golf. I mean, they're probably not interested in golf. So we, we've got to be smart about the way we um, advertise to our users. I don't want to have a call to action. Um, it's super, super important that you think about partnering in this industry. I'm sure this is something that comes natural to you. But think of partnering with Microsoft, because we are somebody you can trust. You can trust us with your data. You can trust us to bring you the right partners. We've got feet on the ground who actually you know, understand your industry. We are working in your industry where we want to actually make progress by bringing you some of the great solutions that we've already built from some similar industries. What we've done for FinTech, for example, what we've done in Forex, we can bring all of that goodness to you. We are not just a tech company or a tech uh, partner of yours. We are a business partner as well. So I want you to consider working with us. Um, there's some names over here where you can actually make local contact. Adrian is actually here today, and he'll be on the booth later on. So please reach out to him. And please start your digital journey as soon as possible. Learn to experiment. If you're a manager, instill some culture where people can experiment, where they can make mistakes. It is all about getting past those failures to get to that successful outcome. And working with us, working with your partners, that is something that can be very, very possible. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please come and give me your questions, and please reach out to Microsoft. Thank you very much.